Today on The Grave Talks, the massive world of the supernatural. Jessica Jones is a very curious woman. As a researcher in all things paranormal, she's gone down many paths, seeking answers to questions involving ghosts, extraterrestrials, Bigfoots, and much more. As with anyone seeking answers in these areas, she's been left with far more questions than answers. Today, we discuss her research, experiences, and the belief she's come to hold on her journey to the paranormal. Well, for me, it began when I was a little kid and I would go outside at night and watch for UFOs. Um, I grew up on a farm mm-hmm. out here in little Georgia, and um, and I would take my little nap mat for uh, kindergarten <laughs> and I would go outside and lay on the ground and look at the stars at night watching for UFOs. Now, not only that, but I would um, go to the library and I would go straight to the fictional section and look for ghost stories. Mm-hmm. OK, so I was really big into ghosts, ghosts and aliens and UFOs and Bigfoot, you know, all that stuff when I was a kid. So uh, it started at a very early age for me, um, but I, I do remember around kindergarten, I had a fascination with uh, UFOs. How interesting! So, yeah. Did did you did you have an experience that that kind of brought you to it? Was it just kind of one of those things where you know it's on unsolved mysteries and that kind of brings you in? <laughs> what was it for you? Yeah, you know, I do remember unsolved mysteries. That was a great show, but. I believe that I was having experiences when I was younger. Don't really remember. Okay. So I do believe that there was something. I was always scared at night. You know, I would, I had bunk beds that I shared with my sister and I had the top bunk bed and I would line the side of my bunk bed uh, that had a little, um, it, it had a crack uh, in between the board and the bed. And I was always scared that something was going to grab me at night. Mm-hmm. So I lined the entire line of that with stuffed animals, little plushies and dolls, because I didn't want anything sticking its hand through my bed and, and grabbing my leg when I was sleeping. <laughs> so, you know, I, maybe that's just the typical, you know, I was, you know, being a kid and I could have been a little scared from all the, you know, ghost stories my mom would tell me, but, um, you know, I was probably having experiences when I was a kid and, uh, and that's why I had that deep seated, you know, fear, but, um, you know, I can't think, I can't put my finger on anything in particular other than uh, just being fascinated with ghost stories. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up in a family where my great grandmother and my great aunt actually had, um, a possible abduction experience, uh, when they were driving down the road, uh, in the 1980s. Okay. They were up in Rome, Georgia and driving down a highway one night and a light came down over their car and it enveloped entire car and they don't remember anything until they kind of snapped out of it and they were 10 to 20 miles down the road in another county and they hit, were missing about two hours of time but they were still on the road driving okay so you know, I grew up with stories like that. We, we have a lot of stories passed down that are very por- paranormal in my family mm-hmm. with, um, you know, people being on like my great great grandmother was on her deathbed and a fireball came out of the woods and circled the house and went inside their house as she was dying. And um, and so the family uh, attributed that to being uh, an ancestor coming to take her to heaven. You know, my great grandmother and my great aunt, their story was not aliens, not ET. It was angels coming down to take them, pluck them out of their car and move their car over um, to avoid an accident. Okay. It was angels. Mm -hmm. It's always angels or something, you know, um, some sort of religious explanation, you know, Mm -hmm. in my family, it it was never thought of an alien, you know, doing any of this stuff or any kind of orbs or ETs or anything like that. Um, So of course it's all about perception, right? Mm -hmm. So we only know what we know. We, un- we only understand what we already know, basically. So, you know, if you know angels, that's it was angels, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, I grew up hearing kind of stories and, uh, and living it. So, yeah, these, these were things that were very familiar to you. It wasn't something that mm-hmm. was shunned or we don't talk about this or that's not real. It was these are experiences family members have had, others have had, and it was just kind of adapted as well, this is kind of part of life. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually really lucky in that aspect because um, I was never made fun of. I was, um, 
you know, I, I wasn't a black sheep of the family. We were all black sheep, yeah. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were just a family of black sheep. So, One um, big uh, breeding family of black sheep, where it's like we're all black sheep. This is great. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> we all match. Yes, yeah. we're yes. All, we're all on the same level. <laughs> You had said earlier that you probably had experiences when you were younger and you don't remember. Do you attribute that to it just being, you know, childhood? Sometimes kids don't remember things from earlier years. Do you attribute that to maybe they were blocked out because it was, you know, so traumatic or, or just yeah. different, you know, than other things in childhood? What, what do I you think look it's at? all of it. Yeah, I think yeah. it could have been all of it. And knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I believe that I've been having experiences my entire life because um, as recently um, as a few years ago, I was having ET contact. OK, and so and but that didn't start until I started studying alien abductions. Okay. okay. So, and, and that stemmed from being out in the field doing Bigfoot research. So it's like a snowball effect. Um, one thing kind of leads to another. You know, growing up, uh, seeing ghosts when I was a kid and, um, you know, as a young adult, I, I had several um, times at night where I would wake up and there'd be people standing by my bed, you know, just as solid as you and I, mm -hmm. you know, humans. Um, and and I, I would I would talk with them and they would communicate with me, but their mouths would never move. And I, and that's just something I always felt was odd. I, it was telepathy at the time. I didn't understand what telepathy was. Mm -hmm. But I was having conversations with these people and their mouths weren't moving, you know, and, and yeah. I do remember that. Um, now, when I started having contact with ETs, I'm having conversations with them just like I did with a ghost when I was a kid and a young adult. And their mouths aren't moving. But like I've told people before, I don't even think they had mouths. <laughs> OK, so mm -hmm. um, but but I heard their conversations. I heard what they were saying to me. I heard, you know, and I was talking back. In my mind, I guess it was just an understanding. There. So, was was I seeing ETs when I thought I was seeing ghosts when I was younger? You mm -hmm. know, I I don't know. It's all kind of muddled together for me now because I don't know what the connection is and what the separation is anymore. When you look back on those experiences of waking up and seeing people around you in your bedroom do you can you recall what some of those things are that were said to you what those conversations were about yeah i do i it happened several times and a lot of the ones that i remember are right after my brother passed away i, I had a, a younger brother who died in a car accident back in 2006 and um the week after he died actually you know i was it was it was horrible and i was um I was having a hard time with it, losing my brother. He's my little, my baby brother, you know, he's sure. 22, but still he's my baby brother. And, um, you know, I, I woke up one night and there were, first of all, one night there were orbs all over my bedroom. There were green orbs. And I was watching them as they kind of moved in this weird movement. And they started forming from feet down on the ground all the way it was like boots to a pair of jeans to a polo shirt to arms and then a head and i saw it was my brother and he sat down on the bed and he didn't say anything to me but he leaned over and he kissed my forehead and i felt it okay so that was that was an interesting time he so he didn't communicate other than he gave me a kiss on my forehead and it was almost like you know telling me goodbye mm -hmm. and and it was very comforting now about a week later, I woke up with a man and a woman. The woman was knelt by the bed and the man was standing behind her and they were dressed in Victorian era clothes. And they kept telling me, thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate you, what you've done. And I couldn't understand what we're talking about. But I was wrestling with the fact that my family and I had to make the decision whether to donate my brother's organ. Okay. Sure. And I was, I was, I was actually against it in a way because um, the way it was gone about, it was just, you know, the, uh, it just wasn't gone about the right way with the organ donation company and all that kind of stuff. They were, it just made our whole family just, we were already upset and it made us even more upset. We were having to deal with that. And, um, you know, but we, we decided to, to donate his organs. And, um, and so, Looking back on that, I, I came to terms with the fact that was um, family. I think it was ancestors. It was some. It was someone thanking me 
for donating my brother's organs because it saved so many lives, you know? And, and so, but it, it took a, another psychic friend of mine to help me interpret that, what that was, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I've never gotten any profound messages from any of these, um, ghosts or spirits or even ETs that I know of. I just, it's just been things that were comforting for me. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, you know, maybe, maybe that's just my experience with all of this is just, um, being comforted, you know, by the other side. <laughs> so do, who knows? Do you consider yeah. yourself someone who is able to pick up on these things when others may not? For example, uh, it just in theory, situationally here, what your opinion is. Let's say there was another person that was in the room with you uh, when that experience happened. You saw the green orbs and you saw your brother uh, come and, and give you a kiss on the forehead. Had there been another person in that room, would they have seen that? Or is that something that only you would have picked up on? That's so interesting that you, you're asking me that because I do have an instance where I was in that um, I was in that situation and um, I came home one weekend from a research a research weekend doing you know Bigfoot and ET paranormal research out at the meadow, this place that my team researches. And I came home and my son was around two years old at the time. And he was um, on my elliptical machine and he was looking really cute. And uh, his dad was there uh, filming him with his camera. And it was really just having fun, having a good time. And I was in the kitchen making dinner and uh, and I got called into the living room where the elliptical machine was. And um, his dad said, hey, you know, you're going to want to see this. Mm-hmm. And he had his camera up and filming my son. And I looked up and I saw two balls of light floating around my son. And my son said, mom, ball, ball. <laughs> and I kept trying to figure out what it was. I thought it was a, a bug. You yeah. know, I said, oh, is that a bug? And my son said, no, mom, ball. <laughs> and um, his dad was, was not able to see these things with his own eyes. Mm-hmm. My son and I were watching them very clearly with both with our eyes two orbs of light floating around they had they were had an intelligence about them okay mm-hmm. my son's father could only see them through the phone through the camera on his phone he could not whatsoever see them with his bare eyes so in the the we we filmed it and the the orb shot to the camera towards the camera and shut the camera off okay but but to this day it it's perplexing thinking about this you know my son and i were seeing these things but my son's dad was not okay yeah only through the camera yeah that's a very interesting uh, story uh, to, to have that all happening in real time because that's it's a very interesting question that we ask about how are we perceiving these you two were able to see them with your your, yes. your naked by the naked eye he was not but on camera it was showing mm-hmm. up we could all see it on the camera yeah Mm -hmm. so i I guess and it's just you know it's conjecture it's opinion why do you think that is that it's showing up on camera he's not seeing it you're seeing it what is that (laughs) that's a great question you know i i'm I'm always left with more questions than i have answers of course um you know i i don't i think that maybe it runs in different people's families some people are able to see it and some aren't I mean, but a camera's able know. to see it because a camera's not a you know it's not genetic it's not from someone else's yeah. family is is it is it there is there a frequency or something that a yeah. camera is picking up that the naked eye doesn't uh, unless you have a certain level of sensitivity uh, you know almost like a, a way of, of an auto like a microphone or something picking up frequencies if you analyzed it that the naked ear would not be able to really hear uh, yeah. is the same thing going on visually. I absolutely, I think so, because, you know, there, there comes a time where, you know, on my spiritual journey, okay, I've been on the spiritual journey and uh, I am understanding now that life is all about energy, frequency and vibration. Okay. And so I try to keep my vibrational frequency as high as possible. Okay. I've, I've been working on my, my well being, and, uh, as from the foods I eat from the to people I hang with, you know, yeah. and the things I watch on TV and anything that I digest as far as the news and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I just, I put up a protective shield around myself because I want to keep my vibrational frequency high. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, and I believe that that is, you know, I think that's part of it. I think it's uh, being 
on a different frequency than a lot of people. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's it. I mean, I've had tried to explain that, you know, it's because we have more DMT in our bodies or something, you know, it, be, it, it could be all sorts of different things, but I think the vibrational frequency is one of those, one of those things on the top of my list. Is it difficult to keep up a high vibrational frequency when you're dealing with things that uh, in many ways, uh, the, the general public and those who are not super familiar with it, I mean, even those who are, you know, can be somewhat fear-based. I mean, we're talking about yeah. ghosts. We're talking about ETs. We're talking about Bigfoots, things that don't necessarily always have, you know, warm and fuzzy wrapped up around them. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, but but you got to you look at it in two ways, actually. So it mm-hmm. can be, you know, people are, you know, we do live in a fear-based society. And, sure. you know, the things that I do are scary. I'm a paranormal field researcher and yeah. I go out and I... Um, communicate with Bigfoot. Okay. And so we, we, I do, I do things that a lot of people are too scared to do and would never think of doing. Okay. Spending uh, days on end, nights on end in the woods with mythological creatures that they're, they're actually real, but, <laughs> mm-hmm. but anyways, um, you know, I do, I do weird stuff like that, but I'm inoculated to all the high strangeness. So yeah. Even when I have an ET show up in my house at night, I'm okay with it. You know, it's like, Oh, that's another weird thing. that just happened. Okay, so there's that aspect. Okay, yes, it is scary. It is very traumatic to have an experience. The first time someone experiences a ghost or sees a Bigfoot or, you know, has an alien or, you know, a UFO experience. Okay, very scary. But at the same time, when someone sees something that's, you know, outside of your reality, outside of this 3D matrix, this box that we're taught to live in and to conform to What that does is it shifts your entire reality. And so it raises your vibration, okay? And and it it jolts you out of this 3D way of thinking and living, okay? It it takes you up a dimension or two, okay? And I may not be right. This is what I believe, okay? Mm -hmm, So I think it's actually a good thing when people do have an experience that they can't explain. It shifts your entire reality. And I think that the world needs more of that right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it is weird and crazy as that sounds. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I, I always find that interesting. It's something that I kind of like, I, I battle a little bit myself because my world is talking about ghosts and true mm-hmm. crime. <laughs> and, yeah, and, right. and it's like, well, <laughs> I, I, I try to stay as positive and and because otherwise that stuff can suck you down, especially the true crime. Exactly. Um, I mean, because I don't like to watch the news. I, I, the only time I, I really kind of take that in these days is when I'm prepping for a show. And then I, I'm just disgusted by the time I'm done with it. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe people are doing these things. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> um, but it's like, but it's entertaining and it helps pay the bills. But it's like, this is dark um but yeah it's it's so interesting i I, i'm very interested uh you know you you kind of you have your foot in in the the pool of all these different things all these different uh Mm -hmm. paranormal you know areas if we're just to kind of generically talk about it do you think and this is i want to know your experience and your opinions is there a connection between all of these things that we you know blanketly call paranormal, whether it be, uh, you know, what we view as ghosts or spirits uh, to ETs, to Bigfoots, things of that, or, or do they all really kind of live in their own respective categories? They're all connected in opinion. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I, I believe that. Yeah. Well, when we go out do Bigfoot field research. Okay. So I, I'm on three different Bigfoot field research teams mm-hmm. and the first time I ever went out on an expedition with these guys, um, I spent an entire night having a low flying UFO hover over my head. Okay. While I was out there um, being kind of being bait, I guess, for Bigfoot. Right. <laughs> and sure. I had, we had ET interdimensional UFO stuff going on all the whole time I was there. Okay. So not only do we have ET or like, a lot of orbs in the woods, lots of orbs, you know, what are orbs? Mm-hmm. That's a, a whole other topic, a whole other, whole other show. We could talk about orbs. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, not only that, but we 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 do everything. We go out and we do the SD sessions out in the field uh, while we're you know studying Bigfoot and aliens and portals. 
um, you know, that that's ghosts. We, we communicate with spirits while we're out there. I mean, it's everything. Now, is it the areas that we're going to just have a whole lot of high strangeness? Yes. Okay. Is it the, the group of people that we have that research together that are just highly switched on humans? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of factors that factor into this, but however, um, once you get your foot in the door to one of these things like Bigfoot, you know, it takes you right into UFO, you know, studying UFOs and alien abductions and possibly being abducted and, you know, communicating with and having trickster spirits in your base camp. And my team actually has a portal that opened up that showed up in the middle of the field and we have it documented and we sent two of our team members into it. Okay, so we've got that. I mean, it's just such a mix of so much stuff out there. And to me, yes, I think it's all connected. Tell me about uh, getting into the world of, of Bigfoot uh, research and, and what, what, what kind of drew you into that? And what was your attitude about it uh, going in? Oh, interesting. Well, I didn't you know, go looking for this. It just kind of, um, I stumbled onto the path of being a Bigfoot field researcher somehow. Um, my mother was attending uh, Wednesday night meetups at a, a friend's house where they had these wonderful topics every Wednesday night about anything metaphysical or supernatural or survivalist stuff. Or, you know, they had speakers there, um, gold and silver and um, you name it, just any kind of topic, mm -hmm. um, hypnosis, a ghost, whatever the, whatever the hot thing was that week. Yeah. And, um, and so she invited me one, one Wednesday, she said, Hey, Jessica, you know, these Bigfoot field researchers are going to be there. And I think you would really enjoy hearing what they have to say. And so I said, okay, great. You know, I'll meet you there. And, um, I went and these gentlemen gave a presentation on their Bigfoot field research and it was amazing. And they had just wonderful evidence and they they were very knowledgeable and um of course i had all sorts of questions like um okay well how come you've never found a body you know mm -hmm. where's the poop <laughs> you know all that kind of stuff sure like, yeah what, like typical stuff that the everyday ordinary person wants to know about bigfoot yeah and um and they saw that i was really interested in it and um and I, I went up and talked to the guys after the program and they said, Hey, we're having an expedition in a month or two to come join us. And so I thought, Hey, you know, what, what better way to spend a weekend than with a whole bunch of strange men in the woods <laughs> chasing Bigfoot. You that know? doesn't sound like the beginning of a Dateline episode or anything. Oh my God. Know? It was, I, everybody thought I was crazy, yeah. but you know, honestly, it was the best thing I've ever done. And, um, and here I am today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was in 2011 uh, when I did that. And that was the first time that I, I went out and did a, a Bigfoot expedition and put myself out there and um, volunteered to be bait, you know, the Sasquatch bait and uh, to, lure, to, to lure the Sasquatch out. You know, they, they send the girl up the hill. So, you know, he'll come out and grab me. But um, <laughs> I didn't get grabbed. Thank yeah. goodness. But um, but I had a good time and uh, and got to experience UFOs and Bigfoot and God knows what else out in those woods that weekend. So and, um, and yeah, tell me about like what what you, you had mentioned, you know, the, the UFO thing. Tell me about experiencing Bigfoot. I mean, what what exactly happened? Well, here's something that's very interesting. And, you know, and I honestly don't like to label things because after some of our experiences out in the field, we were all taught to be remote viewers. So my entire team is trained in remote viewing and uh, the same kind of re remote viewing that the military's used for years. And um, uh, I do coordinate remote viewing. I actually have a show about remote viewing now that I do every Friday night mm -hmm. where I remote view paranormal attacks on people. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, uh, you know, I, I've been the, that first expedition. Okay. This all goes back to the first expedition. I, when I was being bait, baited, you know, that I was baiting the Bigfoots. Mm -hmm. Um, I was walking up a, a hill, uh, while they were watching me through their thermals and their fleers. And, um, I thought one of the guys was running up behind me to scare me mm -hmm. because I, I, I heard something, I felt something. And, um, I just felt an energy rushing at me and, I kind of stopped in my tracks a little bit. You know, I slowed down my walking and something ran up behind me and sweeped my legs out from underneath me and kept going right past me. Okay. 
Now I couldn't explain what that was. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was one of the guys, but, but there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. So I think from the very beginning, you know, was a ghost? I don't know. Was it a cloaked Sasquatch? You know, that people claim that they can cloak themselves. You know, I, I have no idea. So, um, so that happened. And, um, you know, I, I, I could not explain it at the time. Nobody else could either. There was nothing on the flares. There was nothing on the thermals. Nobody saw anything, but I know what I experienced, you know? So, so that did happen. Now, was it a Bigfoot? I can't say it was. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, you know, we, we always have lots of activity. I have to be honest with you. I've never seen a Bigfoot's face like up close. I've never been that close to one to see its face. Now I've been close to them when I didn't see them though, when they're whooping and hollering and screaming at us in our camp. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of experiences with the, with the big hairy guys. So you had, you had said earlier, you know, you, you know, kind of you know, tongue in cheek, but, but true of being out there and communicating with, with these mm -hmm. things. Tell me about that. What, what is, what sort of communications do you have or have you had? Well, you know, I don't, I haven't had a ton of communications with them actually. Now, not to say my team hasn't though, or mm -hmm. has or hasn't. And a lot of the things that we do, we don't talk about. So <laughs> I'm actually not able to talk about a whole lot of that with you today um, because my teams are very um, private with mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But yeah, there, there has been communication. I, I will tell you that there's been communication for sure. Now me personally, I have not done a ton of communicating other than, you know, I'd be at base camp and sleeping at night and it's almost like I'm not sure if I'm dreaming or not and there's things in my tent and breathing on me and just really weird stuff like when you when you start getting into the whole Bigfoot phenomenon you start realizing that there's a way more to these things than just a big hairy monkey yeah. okay, or a big primate in the woods there's a whole other dimension to these things and what I like to talk about a lot of times when I'm discussing Bigfoot and Sasquatch is the X factor. Okay. And so, like I said earlier, I've been on the spiritual journey and I'm, I'm learning all about energy and frequency and vibration. And I understand that there is a major X factor to Sasquatch. All right. And so that includes telepathy, um, you know, possibly being interdimensional. Okay. Because they're, they're coming and going and in a flash of a light and um, you hear footsteps and then they just you know, you don't hear them and you see a flash of light and they just appear. Um, tracks come and go, like we'll be following a track line and the, the footprints just stop, you mm -hmm. know, the, they just vanish out of thin air. Um, like I said, a lot more questions and answers, but you know, you'll, you'll be sleeping in base camp and, you know, by the way, uh, it's almost a hundred percent just about, it will be every time, you know, once everybody starts snoring, that's when those guys like to come and um, around the base camp and start whooping and whistling and stuff. So um, if you really want to have a fun experience and, and get to know the, the Bigfoot, stay up at night when you're out camping and wait till everybody starts snoring and, hear, and listen to see what happens, okay? <laughs> what, because that's when they like to come around. What kind of energy are, are, you, are you perceiving from these things when they're surrounding a base camp? making these kinds of noises is it a like scare these people out of here type thing is it a no we're curious like wh what are you getting well i've never gotten um a, a bad vibe it's usually curiosity mm -hmm. okay it's usually curiosity and you know in the places that we research we go there so much and we've been there so many years um that i think they probably know us <laughs> okay so um it there there's no malicious you know, energy coming out of them at all. Um, not, not, not so far, not, mm -hmm. not when I've been there at least. Um, it's, it's been pretty benevolent. Are, are Bigfoots uh, related more so to almost supernatural than they would be like a primate with the fact that, uh, like you said earlier, there, there's people who claim that they can cloak themselves mm -hmm. or, or, you know, basically, disappear in some way shape or form uh is this something where, where these are are beings of some sort that are really not truly i guess you would say living breathing uh, or are they are they something more more supernatural that that takes these forms 
Oh, you know, I, I'm going to have to answer all of it okay? <laughs> because, because I do believe that they are flesh and bone, you know, but I mean, even, even humans, we're not just flesh and bone, right? We have souls, you know, and um, there's way more to even humans than, than we understand. And same with those things, with those creatures. And, um, you know, there is definitely a supernatural element to them. But I mean, like I said, I don't have all the answers, but also, it may just be that we can't see them. Maybe there's something inside of our eyes. Like we don't have the rods and the cones, you know, we don't, there's something in our eyes that makes it where we can't detect them. Maybe they're standing right in front of us, but we just can't see them. You know, um, maybe there are UFOs and aliens right in front of us and ghosts and all that. They're, they're always right in front of us, but we can't see them because our eyes cannot detect them. You know, maybe mm-hmm. it's us. <laughs> that's like interesting. I, said, I, I have more question answered. No, I mean that that's that's very interesting. I mean, an analogy I could make to that would be um, the flickering of an old TV set, or I have a I have a set of Christmas lights that I I have above yeah. above one of my counters or above one of my cabinets, and when you you film it, you can see it flickering because of the frequency at which it's vibrating. So it looks like they're you know flickering on and off, but they're not to the naked eye. Um, you know, is it something like that, like a vibrational thing where, you know, sometimes it gets picked up on camera. Sometimes it gets picked up by a person that seems to be able to have an extra sense than maybe others do and picks up on frequencies than others do. Is that kind of what, what you're thinking? I think so. Yeah. I think, I think that could be, um, that could be a way to explain it. Absolutely. Um, I just think that there are, I, you know, are they able to raise their vibration and lower it at will? I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a lot more studying that needs to be done. I don't know if we'll ever know. But, um, you know, we're, it doesn't stop me from going out there and still uh, researching and studying and, you know, and, and meeting new people and meeting other researchers who mm-hmm. go out and have experiences because we're never going to learn until we we start talking to other researchers and, and get out there more and spending more time in the woods. Um, that's the only way we're ever going to start figuring this stuff out. So, um, and, and that's why I really enjoy having my shows that I do where I get to talk to other researchers and uh, just exchange ideas and bounce ideas off of each other. And, um, you know, I like to put things out there that may not make sense right now, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to connect the dots mm-hmm. and it may not make sense today and people may call me crazy, but maybe down the road, it'll all make sense. You know, maybe we can connect some dots that no one's ever connected before when it comes to Bigfoot and Sasquatch. That wraps up part one of our conversation with Jessica in part two. Why is it that some plots of land are more prone to being a hotspot? paranormal activity than others. What happened when Jessica's crew came across a portal in the middle of a field? And what happened to one member who stepped into that portal that didn't end very well? How did Jessica communicate with what she believes to be an ET? And are we sometimes visited by things like that in dreams in the same way that some are visited by deceased loved ones, making it more of a spiritual experience than that of a physical one? Until next time, for all of us at the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.